Hello everybody and welcome back to new Area Door. Today's episode will be quite different because I'm right now in the stage of editing this video and I realized that half of my clips don't have any audio like this one. So we have a little bit of a post commentary in today's episode, which I'm really curious how this will turn out. But before we start uh, with uh, what we want to do in the episode, uh, this is what you can see behind me where we left off last time. It is the big dig that we are doing for the Riddle Challenge. And uh, for the Riddle Challenge, we want to have this huge hole in the center where we last episode built the victory monument. And uh, this is just the technical part of it. There will be more aesthetics coming. But um, yeah, you can see that it's almost done behind me. There is the wall still uh, much further um, away to dig. And uh, for this, we need a bunch of TNT because this is way easier than digging. You can see maybe at the walls that there is those areas where there's blocks missing. That is because we blew up stuff with TNT. And so we have a big need of gunpowder. For the gunpowder, we have the mob farm and um, the mob farm is already producing quite a lot of um, gunpowder because there's quite a lot of mobs spawning. But um, yeah, with the scent uh, that we have not this is what I brought over from the farm, um, we can make then the TNT and um, blow up lots of the areas, but we want to have more TNT. So I have been building an extension to the mob farm together with Rike, and I've been recording some clips of that because uh, there's now a little bit of a creeper only farm that we tried to build on top of the mob farm. Because we need a lot of TNT right now, we thought that we would try and fit a creeper only farm on top of our normal mob farm, just temporarily until we don't need it anymore. And this might not be the most effective design, but what we want to try and do is put some cats here, like over here one and on this platform one, and then uh, with the cats bring the mobs into the center. Because we need quite a lot of gunpowder and our gunpowder supply is always empty, we decided to build a creeper only farm on top of our normal mob farm. This might not be the most efficient, but at least it will produce some gunpowder. The way this is working is that we will have some trapdoors at this height here and so only creepers and I think baby zombies potentially can spawn in here. And uh, then we'll have cats that are sitting at the back here that are making the creepers run into the center where they will fall down into the normal channel of the mob farm and get killed over there. So we'll just stretch this, uh, this width here along the whole uh, central line and cover this up. So we will uh, maybe get a few extra creepers with this mob farm. Right now we are quickly in the process of extending our mob farm just a tiny bit. We don't want to add another floor for the mob farm because the spawn rates are already quite good. What we want to do though is add a creeper only level here because this is the top of the chunk and we can build stuff up to that height. And so we figured that since we do have the space we could just build a creeper only farm right here where creepers would spawn in this area here. It's just this width, not all the way to the uh, borders because we will make the creepers run away from cats to the center. This is a common technique right now. And uh, then fall into the normal channel where they will get killed by the um, mob crushing damage. And the way we'll make this creeper only is by placing half slabs, no, uh, trapdoors it is, uh, at this height here, so creepers can spawn under there, but other mobs can't. And we need to make this, of course, spider proof. But uh, I think I will bring you in once we've got the basic layout of this already in place. I don't have much knowledge of creeper only farms. I think the only knowledge that I have about this is from a Hermitcraft episode that I saw. And uh, so I figured that we need to have something to stop spiders. And we have the cats sitting on the sides here because creepers. I tested that in creative will um, go away from the cats for six blocks. So if this is uh, a um, yeah, rectangle around it, uh, then um, a creeper that would be standing here still sees the cat and tries to flee in that direction. And so this might be working, it might not. Uh, what we need now is a few more cats and then we can uh, see when we cover this up if the creepers that are spawning are all running away from the cats as they should. 
I don't have much knowledge of creeper only farms. I think my only knowledge about that is from a video way far back when you could do that with boats and then I saw something in Hermitcraft where uh, they did it now with those uh, trapdoors here and the cats to uh, scare the creepers away and so I tried to optimize it for this area that we are having here and uh, so we are having the cats here then creepers will flee if they are six blocks away from this I think I made a rough test and creative about this so even uh, if it's over here it's because it's six blocks in uh, this direction since it's uh, I think a, a square, it should be, I hope, uh, they should flee. And if you're wondering why there's um, these air blocks here, that is because air blocks increase the spawn or the pack spawning, even though a p block over there is picked, then uh, creepers could spawn inside here. And that is why I was uh, picking that area over there as well. We might have to block off some areas here because the creeper that is standing here might not want to flee in this direction, but we'll have to observe it. We added a little window so we can look inside. And um, yeah, I think now it's just about getting the cats. We just have two right now in the base, so that is why uh, the process is a little slow. There's one now and uh, they need to grow up and then we can cover this up and uh, test it if it is all working. Trying to find a cat and what I find is parrots. That is unfortunate I guess and I don't have leads on me to bring them back to the base as wild ones. So I guess I would just have to leave them here now. I'm running around here for ages and all I can find is those parrots. There's one, two, three, four... And I think I saw more behind here even. Uh, five, six, seven. This is not funny. This is just all parrots. We have been hunting parrots for such a long time. And now that I'm hunting for ocelots, I'm not finding any ocelot, but only parrots. Rika is almost done with breeding up the cats, even though she has just two of them. So each one takes five minutes, and you can imagine that that's then half an hour of breeding and me searching for cats in the stupid jungle. We now have all six cats in there and it started spawning some creepers but we won't see the super high rates right now because there's uh, a lot of other peoples online that uh, have not lit up caves. Uh, Brett might be in the area digging but this should produce at least some more gunpowder now than the other drops and since we can leave the lower farm uh, deactivated because the light levels give up a maximum of 8 to the top I think. Uh, should be all good. We can look into it from right here. Oops. And maybe we can see a creeper fleeing, I hope. So let me stand here for a second and observe that. Oh, there is one. <laughs> he's trying to run. I hope that he's now, yeah. Oh, there you can see one is fleeing over right into the trapdoors like he should be. Looks good. Um, we observe that a little bit more in the future and can see that he's dying immediately and if we uh, turn on the mob farm down below in addition then we should also get some other mobs spawning uh, right like this and um, yeah once we are alone on the server I think it can do a proper test of this. This is the point of the video where I have no audio of my clips anymore. So we are going into the post commentary, which I quite um, look forward to. And uh, as you can see, I'm alone on the server and uh, there's a lot of mobs spawning, especially creeper in this farm. And so we are getting a lot of gunpowder from this. The shaker boxes that you saw earlier that were filled up with gunpowder weren't the only ones that I got from this. I think that I got about two double chests of gunpowder by now and it's just so rewarding to watch this farm in action because you always see those mobs die you see all those items coming through and uh, it's like watching tv they are all dying down there where the minecarts are so pretty good and um, what we want to do now is work on the storage system as the title might have already given away we are completing our storage system today and um, for that we can leave this farm running and collect more and more gunpowder so later today I can meet up with Brad and blow up a lot of stuff again. 
So I was wondering at that point where, why there is a creeper back there, but uh, I wasn't bothered to check this out. I should maybe do that because there shouldn't be anything spawning apart from the inside from the farm. And uh, there usually I'm using, uh, this, or sometimes I'm using a staircase to get out of this farm, but uh, quite often I'm quite lazy and using just the rockets to fly up this old shaft that is still in place, but it can't be really used anymore because the ladders are not going all the way down. So here's the storage system and uh, if you remember we have uh, completed half of the storage system in an episode before already. So the site over there, that is the one that is um, yeah, not um, connected to the other half yet. The uh, site with the blocks, so this one is complete and we do have a temporary input chest for the blocks. So I am putting in nine logs of jungle wood into the system and this then should get sorted into the right chest. This is how the whole uh, sorting system works. It is um, a, a system where we have a bunch of filters. It's about four to 500 filters and uh, those are just connected to 50 chests. So each chest has about an, on average 10 filters. There are some chests like dirt or cobble where there's just one filter connected to the chest, but um, some have uh, quite a lot of filters and so they are grouping up and making the storage really compact to interact with it. So we should see the logs coming through any moment because they are getting filtered here on the left side of the storage system. And there they come. Then they will be going into the item merger where they will be get aligned into the right line for the chest. They are going down behind the system into an item elevator, make their way up. And then they are going into the chest for the locks and we should see all nine items in here once again. And this is what we want to do for the uh, item side as well. So the left side is done, the right side isn't and this is what we want to finish today. You can see that the filters are all in place already. So the hoppers here, the ice path and the filler items. Um, so there can only be one item in each hopper. But what we need to do is uh, set up all the filters, collect all the items that we need to put into there and uh, then put it into the different water channels and uh, this will be quite a task for the video. Collecting all those items in survival is quite a pain. Remember it's about four to 500 items that we had to get in total and getting them creative is pretty easy. You just open your creative inventory and putting them into a chest. But in survival, you have to get around into the world and get everything, craft everything together. And this takes up quite a lot of time. I wasn't expecting it to be that difficult. But now all the items are inside the filters, which is great because then we can now connect these chests here to uh, some droppers which will drop the items into a water stream. The challenging part on this side here of the storage system is that we have four rows where we actually don't have any water streams and those are there because we have four double chests with non-stackable items. You can see here those four are actually blocked and we won't have any items coming through here. There's still the elevators in the back which doesn't matter because um, we just have them there but here we have the tools, the weapons, the armor and the enchanted books which we of course can't sort because they are not stackable. That means that on the other hand that we will have more filters on the other side that need to wind around like uh, in this garden chest here. There's a bunch of items and uh, so we have more filters for those chests which uh, will be kind of tricky to connect to the right spots. Like here you can see they're kind of evenly spaced out. We have the water streams here but it's not as tricky because we don't have as many items. And we will now set up those water streams in a way that hopefully it will be working. So the items will make their way into the right spot, into the right row of the item merger. I think that we found a nice way to get around the problem that I just described with the items having to travel around. Uh, I will show that to you in just a moment. Uh, I think that we have everything now hooked up so you can see the droppers are spitting the items into water streams and ice and sometimes they are just going around and hitting a fence gate. 
And uh, then over here you can see there's one of those intersections where an item will go around, make their way over here to this spot where I'm actually not quite sure if this is working. So I should maybe give that a, a proper test and put some items into the dropper here to see if uh, they make their way into the right row of uh, the um, item merger because they are having a little bit of a diagonal pass and so they might have, yeah, you can see, I think they are bending over to uh, the left a little bit, so right from this perspective. And uh, if they do that, then they won't be ending up in the right chest because it's important that they just go in a very, very straight line. And uh, so I will have to fix that uh, for this, but the other ones should be way more straightforward because they're just hitting a fence gate and then dropping in. And uh, over there you can see how we solved it with uh, the items having to go over. They are not going around in the back. They are just going onto some normal ice where there's no water on top and just sliding over to the right spot in the storage system. So um, it is more obvious in the back where we have them almost touching the other side or even they are touching the other side because we even have one that is going over here. You can see it again um, going over into the center and then dropping down and then uh, this one here is even going over to the very other side where they should be coming from the other side and uh, then this one here is connecting and then dropping down. And since there's no water on top, it looks kind of decent. They are getting accelerated on the ice, just making their way over and then falling into the right spot. And like that, going into the right row of the item merger. What is there left to do, you may ask? Um, it is to connect up the upper ice pass where the items that need to be sorted will be traveling on this one here. We need to have boats in the back where the items are getting aligned, like here with the inner chest. We did that already for the other side. And uh, just bring the ice around. This water stream is now in place as well. And as you can see, both sides are connected up through the staircase and bringing the items all the way to the back where they are being aligned. The alignment is pretty important because the items need to travel on the ice, but be in range of the hopper so they can be picked up. So here they're getting pushed against the hitbox of the boat. And so they are still on the ice and can travel in with ice speed, but still can be picked up by the hoppers. And this is uh, the real trick to it. And um, yeah, like this, it should be all working. In the end here, we connected a water stream that is going into one of the chests. Uh, this one here, where we'll collect the items that aren't sorted, like armor parts or some items that might be for some reason not being sorted. And then uh, the chest on the bottom right will be our input chest for this. And uh, then the items hopefully will be traveling up top over to this ice stream and then start their way. So if an item doesn't get sorted, it makes a full loop through the sorting system. I think we can now test this out by just putting in some items here in this chest and uh, seeing if they all get sorted. We can put anything into here now, blocks, items, whatever we like, because um, they will be now all sorted. And if they aren't, they will be ending up in the according chest for non-sorted items. And um, we can then watch this happening. So you can see that uh, the items making their way around. The items are actually not flying out of here. It's just a visual glitch where they still have a lot of speed and doesn't get slowed down um, immediately. But actually they are all making their way in the water stream over to the other side. They will be hopefully coming through uh, to the um, yeah, connecting part of the block and item side. So they are going over the torches and the ender pearls. Um, to here. I think that the ender pearls are already sorted in this first row here because mob drops should be on the right side of this storage system. So we should see them coming in at the bottom in just a moment. Let's have a look. Oh, they can't go into the sorting system because there's still the blocks here, which have been there to block all the items from the construction to not go into the chest. But there we can see that the torches are coming in. So the interior chest, this would be. And um, there is some rotten flesh uh, that is going into the mob drops area. And um, like that, um, all the items should get sorted. The task for us is now to uh, check if everything is working here. And then of course, off camera, I will 
fix uh, the item elevator and uh, set up an input chest. But this is sadly all I have time for for today's episode. It has been taken quite a lot of time. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, then of course feel free to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and share this video with your friends. And I hope then to see you in the next video. Until then, have a great day.